some level you feel incredibly connected to a secret thing that is not visible to anyone else. Sometimes there's a huge urgency, it's very compulsive and I need to get, you know, some kind of thing down. I need to get it out of my head. When I, you know, first heard the word, the word and the diagnosis and I thought, oh gosh, that's, that's, that's me, sounds like, in a way. I, I was completely and utterly devastated. It was, I was very, very, very low and um, felt like life had just ended in a way. And, um, but one of the things I had been doing in hospital was, was you know, this, this drawing. Taking stuff that happens in my head out there onto paper or, or into, you know, sculpture and things like that. And I think it, it, it's a complete act of dispossession. Just, that's all I've got left in a way. Empty this crap. Just get it out of my head. Get it out there. And, you know, and leave me alone. Just, you know. One of the difficulties in understanding any psychiatric illness, let alone schizophrenia, is that you're largely reliant on the person's subjective description of their experiences. So Sue's very articulate, so you can actually get all of those experiences from her, and the artwork that she has is an exquisite way of presenting her experience of the illness, which is unusually clear. So in a way, she's trying to understand her illness and try and express it in a way which is visually comprehensible and in the same way we're trying to understand the psychotic experience approaching that from perhaps a brain imaging angle where we're trying to present picturally what's happening and what the dysfunction is in the brain during that psychotic process. So well for instance this one I, I mean I, you can tell that I'm, I'm fairly distressed um, and I've, I've started thinking in German that's devil command and those are the little eggs when I'm in this particular state, then what I'm experiencing is um, Satan has actually laid his, his his babies, his little eggs, in my kidneys. And I can feel them. I, I get somatic, you know, I, I can feel that they're there. And then they get this tickling up the spine because they're crawling up the spine and they're going into my head. And then they're, these little things are coming out of my eyes and they're infecting the entire planet. Yeah, and these are the little eggs. But as so, these are, so these are little eggs. What about these things here? Well, there's yeah. little, they're little eggs too. As well. Okay. Yeah, and there's the kidney. There's the kidney there. What, what, what's going on in my head, I and mean, what, I, what I, I can see, as it were, and it, this is just a big gap between what I put down on paper and what's going on, and it'd be really nice if I could get some sort of s snapshot in the head. Okay. Well, I think that's a good, but the snapshot is, idea is quite nice. So yeah. with using the kind of fMRI technology. So what we do is we take patients with schizophrenia who are prone to hearing voices, having auditory hallucinations. We put them inside the functional MRI machine and we can look to see what is the brain activity which is correlated with the experience when they're having hallucinations against periods of time when they don't have hallucinations. One of the experiences that people have is that they hear, say, for example, voices, mm -hmm. and I just wondered yeah. whether that was an experience that you'd also shared. Yeah, well, well, I get them, but I wouldn't say... It's more like I'm a telephone exchange, so I can hear various conversations, uh, and there's a particular set of conversations which the two people are having a telephone conversation, mm -hmm. and I'm intercepting it, and they're telling, they're telling... They're saying just... I don't even want to repeat what they're saying. Uh, so, but then, bad things. Very, very bad Rude things. things. Rude, revolting. Just, oh, okay. you, you don't want to, oh, okay. let's not go there. So what we can do is actually have a look at the, the brain. So this is essentially just a cut across the brain, starting from the bottom, just taking it from here and just kind of moving slowly cut up. up. Yeah. Yeah. And then what you can mm -hmm. see, I guess, here, this mm -hmm. bit and this bit yeah. are, the, are the temporal hearing parts of the brain, yeah. which seems to be 
much more active when, mm -hmm. when people are having the experience of hearing things. So for you, that would well, be the equivalent of the telephone things, so exchange. So you would expect the temporal lobe to be active. You? Well, exactly. They are Good. hearing them. And so. then the other thing you notice is that you've probably heard of Broca's area, which is... Yeah, that's a sort of you, language, is it? Language, or it's, it's thought well. to be a language generation yeah. area. So this is mm -hmm. the kind of brain area which is involved when people are generating speech. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, like we're doing now. Like we're doing now, yeah. exactly. And so when people are, are hearing something, hearing, having these auditory hallucinations, what happens is that the speech generation parts of their brain mm -hmm. also seem to be much more active. Oh, so, so you're saying that we're generating in the head. That's I'm really saying that one of the theories that you could look at would be yeah. that uh, is this experience something mm -hmm. that you're generating yourself mm -hmm. and somehow the, the, the monitoring of it, has, yeah. you, you don't have control, you don't realise that that's going on. So you may be sitting there acting as a telephone conduit mm -hmm. and hearing lots of material. The people sitting next to you can't tap into that experience. Mm -hmm. and, but yet, it's, it's real. So one of the things that's difficult for people who've never had that experience is mm -hmm. how can it be real if I, sitting next to you, can't tap into it? In terms of establishing trust with patients, because of this brain imaging technique, which show that the auditory cortex and subcortical areas are active, when people are hearing voices, I can say to the patient that I now I believe that you are hearing voices. I may not be able to hear it, but I know that you are because we have this brain imaging data showing that that's what happens. The easiest way I think for, for someone from the outside to understand it's a bit like being in a dream world, except I don't recognize it is a dream world, but that is how I think would most capture the sense of what's going on. It's like some nightmare.